Ever since Google Podcast was released back in June of 2018, I've been a constant user on a near daily basis. I've used the app all the time during workouts or long walks. I've listened to podcasts as I've fallen asleep for many, many years, and Google Podcast always served as the definitive, reliable, no-nonsense podcasting app. But unfortunately, very soon in April 2024, after five short years, the app will officially be discontinued with YouTube music, which gives me mixed feelings of sorts. On one hand, I truly do understand why Google's making this move and is probably one of the most understandable killed by Google situations we've seen in a while. If you look at it from a business perspective, Google Podcasts and YouTube Music effectively serve the same base level function of discovering, downloading, and playing back podcasts. On the YouTube side, they already have a deep connection with a wide variety of creators, so it's easier to help them leverage their existing audience and monetize it. The YouTube Music app does support ads, so of course it will generate significantly more revenue than Google Podcasts can, and according to the YouTube blog, 23% of weekly podcast users say YouTube is their most frequently used service versus only 4% for Google Podcasts. So in theory, it only makes sense to combine all their resources into one single app, and as a whole, it's basically a short-term loss for a long-term gain. But as someone that was a dedicated user of the Google Podcast service, I just can't help myself but to feel a little bothered by this. Yes, I am a creature of comfort that doesn't want to see my favorite, tried and true podcasting app discontinued, not to mention Google Podcasts has had quite a few aspects that they've nailed perfectly. The simplicity of it all is one of the main reasons Google Podcasts was so well regarded. As a whole, it was a clean, easy to use, well-designed single purpose app. Navigation was very straightforward. You could easily find what you were looking for and there was very little clutter getting in the way of your content. There was no weird algorithms to gamify viewing time, no in your face recommendation system, just you and the podcast you subscribe to with a few basic features to get you by. I also felt Google Podcasts was a good look for the brand itself. As someone that primarily uses Google services in every aspect of my life, I like the idea of a Google built and maintained podcast app. Much like how Apple has Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts felt like an environment built towards the preferences of their user base. There was integration with Google Assistant, Google branding was sprinkled all throughout the UI, and their signature Material U design language was front and center in every app and the media player, which made everything feel like a true first party service meant for those integrated in the Google ecosystem. Lastly, there were just enough features to meet the needs of the average user without going overboard. Google Podcasts had a gorgeous web version that synced with your phone and had cross device sync over all your devices. We also had sleep timers, casting features to a Chromecast or Android TV device, silence trim to cut out those moments of dead air, the ability to download podcasts for offline use, and a really simple queue management system. Did I mention all of this was free as well? No integrated ads, no ad banners, no premium plan needed. Users got something that worked and worked well with no strings attached. Then we take a look at YouTube Music, which is not quite there yet. Don't get me wrong, I'm a YouTube Premium subscriber, I use YouTube and YouTube Music on a daily basis as my primary sources of entertainment, so I should be happy about this, but there's a few issues holding me back. Before we get into it, let's talk about the good things real quick. Over the past year, Google has been building out an infrastructure to make YouTube Music a better podcasting app, like the ability to manually add podcasts via RSS, and creators can also upload their podcasts with RSS as well. There's now an option to sort by most popular and oldest to newest, alongside automatic downloads and Wear OS support. Unlike most podcasting apps, YouTube Music does support seamless switching from audio to video, which is honestly one one of its greatest strengths. It really does give the platform its own identity, especially with likes, dislikes, and comments for a sense of community, so in a way, YouTube Music does have its own truly unique offering. Not to mention, it does have a UI that looks pretty on mobile, tablet, and desktop with their translucent gradient backgrounds and nice graphics. But in terms of positives, that's pretty much it for me. 
Then we take a look at some missing features that YouTube Music should be supporting for podcast users like a completely separate queue management system. The closest we get is a playlist marked new episodes inside your library tab where you can add episodes to your queue amongst other options. This is actually the number one issue I personally have, which is how cluttered the app feels, especially if you're used to the simplicity of Google Podcasts. Whether you're in search, the homepage, or your library tab, music, music videos, regular YouTube videos at times, and podcasts are all mixed together in almost every single tab. Oftentimes, I'm searching for a specific podcast and get song recommendations as the first option. Or I go to the explore page and hit the podcast tab, I'll get recommended content clearly meant for video first. Not to mention, YouTube Music is of course a music app first, so when I switch gears and wanna to listen to music instead, I have to filter through podcast suggestions on my homepage. I I just wish there was more of a hard divide between podcasts and the rest of YouTube content because I find the experience to be distracting to the point where I'd rather just download a third party standalone app. All of this before I get to a genuine issue that users will be looking at when seeking out the best possible podcasting experience, YouTube Music is missing quite a few basic podcast first features. There's currently no option to mark an episode as played, no new episode notifications, no automatic removal of downloaded episodes that you've already listened to, there's no podcast chapters, no podcast transcriptions, and many more. These issues put us dedicated Google Podcast users in a tight situation. YouTube Music is great for what it is, and we know Google is working on improving the podcast experience, but I'm a bit impatient and want a solution now, so for the time being, I'm gonna switch to a dedicated, standalone podcasting app. Over the past few months, I've tried about a dozen different apps or so, and the ones I'm about to recommend do most of what Google Podcasts did well. They have a clean, no-nonsense UI, some basic features that should satisfy most users, users, a non-egregious premium offering, if any at all, and is a dedicated standalone experience that works well on the Android platform primarily. And honestly, the one podcasting app I've seen get even close to Google Podcasts is AntennaPod. I like it for a few reasons specifically. One, it's completely free with no premium plan and no ads in the app. Even if you wanted to pay, there's literally nothing to pay for, which is super rare in the tech world. AntennaPod is also open sourced and maintained by volunteers, so it's not really profit focused, but more so trying to be a good podcasting app. And I would say it is. The UI is clean and straightforward. It can be customized with different themes, including a material use styled match or wallpaper theme. You also have the option to shift UI elements around based on your preferences. In terms of features, we have the same basic setup we see with Google Podcasts, like a silence trimmer, sleep timer, offline downloads, and importing podcasts podcasts from an existing app. Unfortunately, there is no device sync or web versions without setting up your own server of some kind. Otherwise, this is the closest we have to a Google Podcast replacement, at least on the mobile side of things. Next up is a popular choice I see recommended often, and I definitely can as well, with Pocket Casts. It's been around since 2010, so they've been in the game for about 14 years now. Their app is super fast, has nice animations, and a clean UI. I think it's a bit iOS-like, which is not really what I want to see, but functionally, it hits the same beats that made Google Podcasts so great. There's clear organization for subscribe podcasts, simple, no-nonsense discovery page for finding new ones. You can't really customize the UI layout, but there are themes and options to change specific gestures. Of course, it has all the same baseline features that Google Podcasts had, like sleep timers, silence trimmer, casting, offline downloads, syncing playback across multiple devices, and more. There aren't a ton of ads, thankfully. Basically zero with a small banner in the profile page and a sponsored post in the discovery tab. Otherwise, nothing crazy. You can subscribe to their premium plan, which is about $3 a month that most notably gives you access to a desktop app and the Wear OS version alongside some themes, but overall it's a great replacement for Google Podcasts. For my last recommendation, I will have to give it to 
the Podcast Republic for most of the same reasons. It has a very simple UI that can be customized in terms of layout. It is a little old school looking maybe, but still perfectly functional. It offers most of the same features we mentioned earlier, like downloads, importing of new podcasts, sleep timers, and Android Auto integration as well. But really, Podcast Republic is on this list because it's reasonable in terms of their premium offering. There are ad banners that can be removed with a one-time payment of $4 or is bundled into the Google Play Pass if you're already paying for that. Typically, that's not normal with most podcasting apps. Most of the ones I've tried have a reoccurring monthly or yearly plan that is almost the price of a Netflix subscription. So in terms of cost, this is the most reasonable ask I've seen so far. In closing, let me not be dramatic here. YouTube music is pretty great for the most part. It has the huge backing of the YouTube platform, seamless audio and video switching, and arguably does have just enough to get it by as a basic podcast player. Realistically, if Google can fix the UI problems by making it more of a standalone experience inside the YouTube app, I think that will solve maybe 70% of the frustrations that I and many others have with the idea of making the switch, but we'll just have to wait and see. With that said, guys, let me know what you think of the great Google podcast shutdown of 2024. Do you think Google's making the right move here? And if you have been a dedicated user, what podcast app have you switched to moving forward that you can recommend to the community? Leave a comment and let me know. I'm sure myself and many other Android enthusiasts would love to read your thoughts. But in the meantime, guys, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.